So I want to talk about what you'll be doing in lab to uh, do a horsepower test on the pumps. Uh, the point of this test, the objective is going to be to observe how the uh, horsepower springs in the pump are adjusted and how that adjustment affects the uh, load that's placed on the engine and how well the pump hydraulic horsepower is matched to the available engine horsepower. So while we're doing that test, what we're going to be doing is sending full flow out of these two pumps. So that means we're going to have the engine revved up to high idle. So the pump shaft speed is turning as fast as it can. And then we're going to um, operate the boom raise function because boom raise is a two pump flow uh, implement. By pulling fully on the boom raise control, we'll be sending all of the flow from these two pumps via the control valve. Uh, to the raise, heading for the raise line on the boom cylinder, but of course we've got it disconnected and fed through our flow meter. So we'll be sending full two pump flow through the flow meter. All the operator is going to be doing in the cab is monitoring the uh, gauges and watching for safety concerns or issues, uh, and then their job is going to be to pull back on the boom raise pilot lever touch no other hydraulics, but pull that back so they've got a con we've got a continuous uh, flow of full boom raise flow to the flow meter. So what we'll see on here is uh, about 36 gallons per minute. I might drop a little bit as the oil warms up, but, but we'll ha start out with the load valve wide open. So uh, then what we're going to do is follow through the sheet and the procedure that goes with it. But the objective is going to be to record the flow, the engine RPM, and the hydraulic system temperature at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different system pressures. So uh, we would like to start at zero PSI, but there is some restriction through this flow meter. There is some restriction through the control valve, but mostly on the way back to tank through the cooler and the filter into a pressurized tank. So we'll record what our minimum pressure is on this pressure gauge when the load valve's wide open and we're sending full flow through the flow meter. And then to check the temperature, we can check the temperature internally here on our temperature scale. Uh, because as we go on with this test, we're going to be heating up the oil. We want to know how thin we're making it through testing. So I'll be starting on low flow scale. I should mention too, before we start the test, we want to check our uh, we want to check our battery at, at the B test position and make sure the needle is above the B on the scale. We would not want to, uh, you know, blame poor pump flow on, you know, weak pumps or some other issue with the hydraulic system. The real problem was a, a weak 9-volt battery in here, so we want to make sure the battery is healthy, and it is. Um, so then we'll be starting out on the low flow scale. And again, we'll be measuring... Uh, I guess we'll have to start out in the high flow scale because we're going to be at about 36 gallons a minute, which would be off the low, low flow scale. So we'll see where our flow is with no load, full RPM, full boom raise, sending as much flow as possible through this circuit. And we'll measure the pressure, which will be the back pressure of the valve, the cooler, the filter, the, the pressurized tank. So we'll record that pressure, whatever the minimum pressure reads. We'll record the flow in GPM. And then we'll have a tack hooked up to the engine and we'll record the engine RPM. So we'll basically be seeing our high idle speed minus whatever bit of load is pulling the RPM down a bit. Um, and we'll record the temperature. And then what we're going to do is increase the load until we get a thousand PSI of pressure on this gauge. So the operator's still going to be doing a full boom raise in the cab. Engine's still at high idle. We'll start to wind in the restriction here and cause some restriction to flow until we build the pressure to 1,000 PSI. At 1,000 PSI, again, we'll record the flow in gallons per minute. We'll record our engine RPM. Engine should be starting to lug now because we're starting to restrict the flow. It's putting more horsepower load flow times pressure. It gives us our horsepower load, and we'll see how the engine holds up to that. And again, we'll record our temperature. And then we'll increase the load to 2,000 PSI. So we'll keep cranking the valve in here, 2,000 PSI, and we'll take our readings again. Uh, the flow is going to be dropping off here because as you start to put the pumps under more load, they're going to leak more internally. So if, especially for high-hour pumps, uh, you're going to see the flow 
at the lines coming to the boom circuit actually dropping because there's going to be more internal leakage in the pump. So in the first few readings between minimum pressure and 2000, we're really measuring the performance of the pump. Uh, then we'll keep increasing the pressure, 2,500, 3,000. As we get into these higher pressures, well, then we're not so much measuring the performance of the mechanical parts of the pump and how they leak internally. Once we get into the higher pressures, then we're measuring the horsepower controls. Those two springs that are in there and the swash plate, how the springs are trying to push the swash plate over and how the three pins on this side for the two pump outputs and the blade pump outlet um, how they're trying to push on the swash blade to destroke it against those springs. So we're going to see our point of destroking. We're going to see how much pressure it takes and all of a sudden our flow meter needle is going to start to back off and that means we've started to compress the springs in here. So the point at which we start to compress those springs and we see our flow start to back off from the 36 gallons a minute to you know 34, 30, 30, 29, 25 that's going to happen as we get into these higher pressures because the pump control is doing its job managing the horsepower load on the engine. So we'll record those numbers, we'll still keep reading the temperature, and we'll get up to 3500. Uh, and then at the end here, we're actually going to, for maximum pressure, we're going to close the load valve. We still have the main relief in the circuit the way we're doing this test. We're not doing a direct pump flow test at this point, we're testing all of the circuitry to the boom function. So we'll actually close the load valve, and on here we'll be reading the setting of our main relief. Or maybe our port relief, if our port relief is affecting the, the maximum pressure. But we should be reading our main relief setting on here. We'll record that. At that point our flow is going to be zero through here because we've got the load valve closed. All the flow, it's still flowing, but it's flowing over the main relief valve. So we're not going to see it on the, on the tool here. And then once we get all those readings, we're going to plot it on here. And what we'll see is the, uh, the flow starting out at a high number. Uh, this goes up to 35 gallons a minute. We'll probably be right up at the top of this scale. And then the line will be decreasing ever so slightly because of internal leakage. Um, and because we're, we're bringing the engine RPM down. So we're going to be watching for that too. Is the engine really falling on its face or is the RPM holding fairly consistent? And then as we uh, increase the, the pressure, we'll see that flow again come down, come down, come down. We'll, we'll keep increasing the pressure. Here's how we're cranking in the load valve. Here's how the pump is dealing with it. So we should see a line that kind of slopes down a little bit as the pump leaks more. And then we'll see it abruptly start to decrease flow as the springs in the pump start to get compressed and the swash plate starts to destroke the pump. So we'll see kind of a, a slope, a gentle slope, then a sharper slope. And then we should see a dog leg in there sort of a flattening out of the rate of, of destroke again as we come up against that second spring in the pump control. So if you recall, the engineers can't find one spring that compresses at the right rate to match the torque curve of the engine. So we've got the heavier, shorter spring inside the bigger but weaker, longer spring. So we'll start compressing the, the first spring and then eventually we'll bump up against that second spring and we'll see a dog leg in our chart when that happens. And then again, we're listening to the engine. Is the engine falling on its face? Is the RPM dropping right back? Is that why our flow is decreasing? If this horsepower control on the pump is adjusted to match the torque curve on the engine properly, then the engine RPM should be pretty consistent um, throughout the whole range of testing. So we're going to observe that on the tack and we'll see how, how our engine does. Because in this testing, we could have a sick engine. What if the uh, fuel filters, uh, you know, half plugged or the air filter is half plugged we'd want to do a visual check on those sorts of things first and listen to how it's running but we could have bad injectors uh, we could have uh, old uh, maybe we've got winter grade fuel in this machine um, you know all those things are going to affect the engine's ability to deliver full power to the pumps so we want to observe rpm during a test like this and but if the engine's not lugging and the pump is giving us good flow and pressure and we're able to measure the horsepower, hydraulic horsepower at the flow meter and everything seems to be on spec, well then we can give this machine a clean bill of health and we know uh, that there should be power to at least the boom circuit. We, we've checked that out fully. And that's really why you'd be doing a test like this. It's not to identify an issue or a problem, it's to verify that there are no problems from the pumps right to the hydraulic cylinder. If we can get 
70, 75 percent probably of you know rated engine power at the boom cylinder. Uh, we've probably you know we've put any uh, operator concerns about lack of power to rest. You know we can see that there's power right at the, the hydraulic cylinder. So that's what we're doing. We're basically dyno testing the engine. We're loading the pumps. We're checking out the uh, the main, making sure the main relief isn't opening soon. So we're basically observing the power right at the boom cylinder. And and some shops, some dealerships will do this right at a PDI, pre-delivery inspection. They'll actually verify uh, that the machine is making power right to the right to an implement. It, it's not a, a very labor-intensive test. Uh, if you've got all the quick connectors and everything, adapters all made up in, in ahead of time for different models of machine, actually running through this test doesn't take much time at all. And it really can just confirm that you've got a healthy engine, uh, everything's adjusted properly in the hydraulic circuit, and you're actually getting power right to the uh, boom cylinder. You can test other circuits as well. Again, the reason we're doing boom and the reason we're doing boom raise and not boom lower, because on this machine, boom raise is a two pump flow function. We could do the stick in or out, but it's a little, a little more difficult to get to the lines. So the lines are nice and handy here for hacking, checking, uh, hooking up a flow meter and checking the flow for the boom circuit. And of course, we'll also be verifying that the oil cooler is doing its job. We should see the temperature coming up during this test as we're putting more and more load. Because we're putting a, a very continuous load on, on the excavator's hydraulic system, which isn't typical. Normally when a machine's digging, it's there's intervals, you know, where the where the boom's coming down or the stick's going out, where there's low pressure, low load situations, giving the, the system a chance to cool down. We'll be testing our oil cooler and our, our circulation system and and verifying, really verifying that everything's working well, which is which is what's great about doing a test here like this. You're basically confirming that the machine should be able to dig very well.